Curzon traveled west of Cairo to the Syrian monastery, part of Egypt's 2,000-year-old Coptic church. He'd heard that its library was in poor condition and wanted to preserve whatever texts he might find there for posterity. When Curzon visited the library, he found the place in complete disarray with manuscripts just littering the floor. In his own words, he saw himself as a kind of biblical knight errant, there to save the texts from the thraldom of ignorant monks kept in their dark monastic dungeons. The librarian of the monastery, Father Begul, knows of the chaos that Curzon encountered. At that time, the monastery was in a poor condition, very, very poor condition. Not only the monastery, but the whole Egypt. Nobody had enough money for food. So, uh, a very poor condition books were put in the burner because they haven't enough uh, wood. During Curzon's visit, a blind monk showed him some of the library's collection, a scene illustrated in one of Curzon's books. According to Curzon, the young English lord plied the blind monk with sweet liqueur so he would lead him into the deepest recesses of the vaults. Taking the candle from the hand of one of the brethren, I discovered a narrow low door and entered into a small closet with the loose leaves of ancient manuscripts. Curzon bought dozens of rare Christian manuscripts from the monks, including a precious 9th century gospel fragment. The texts are now in the British Library, more than 2,000 miles from where they were found. How do you feel about that? I think Curzon himself, in his mind, would like to save this uh, collection. Maybe if uh, uh, they were stayed uh, in the monastery, now it was in the fire. So I'm very happy uh, that these manuscripts are still alive wherever it's in the al Suryan or in the British life. Curzon's cache of manuscripts included a surprise. A Christian text no one had seen before the Acts of Peter and Paul. Although they are important characters in the New Testament, the Acts of Peter and Paul were never included in the Bible. The Acts of Peter and Paul have Peter and Paul in Rome as brothers, which is extraordinary, because Peter, of course, is the original Jewish apostle who is given the order by Jesus to go and lead the church after his death. Paul is representing something very different. He's representing the Gentile Christianity. They actually have a row together. Bringing these two together is absolutely essential for the unity of the church. The question was why this important Christian text was not included in the Bible, and how many more texts not included in the canon were out there, waiting to be discovered.